Yo, what's going on? It's Jordan here. So in this video, I titled it Looks Maxing and Body Game. Women will give you choosing signals and approach you handsome men's game. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the importance of looks maxing and practicing body game, aka dialing in your physique to attract women to you in 2024 and years beyond, even if you're watching this in 2025, 2026, or just way into the future, this is actually going to be even more relevant in the future than it is right now. And the choosing signals to look out for when it comes to peeping out women, filling you and having attraction towards you, what those choosing signals look like and how women will actually approach you, whether that's in person or online. And my personal stories of women choosing and approaching me just to showcase to you guys that I'm not just full of shit and just talking and talk. Now, before we dive into the video, I did just create a brand new free training called how to attract women to you on autopilot with IAB. So this is simply a free training that men are using to maximize their looks and become the most handsome, attractive version of themselves without having male model looks or 1% genetics. They're actually able to attract women to them on autopilot. And now they have a thriving and abundant dating life where they're attracting beautiful women to them on autopilot consistently, predictably, and reliably and their dating life is just so much better now. So if you want in on the action, then I would highly suggest that you check out the free training. After this video, I'll have it linked down below in the description as well as the comment pinned down below. So with that being said, I have this video broken down into four different parts. So the importance of looks maxing and body game to attract women to you, choosing signals to look out for, how women will approach you and some stories, right? To back up what I'm saying in this video. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's dive into the first part of the video. So the importance of looks maxing and body game to attract women to you. So here's the thing, guys, if you want to succeed with women in 2024 and for years beyond, because this is going to be even more apparent and even more important as time pass, you have no choice. I repeat, you have no choice but to looks max, to dial in your physique and practice body game and become the most handsome and attractive version of yourself if you actually want to succeed with women. I don't care what you say. For you guys that say that looks don't matter, it's, all, it's only about the personality and charisma, you couldn't be further from the truth. Do those things matter? Yes, and we'll talk more about those things later on in this video. But if your looks aren't dialed in, women aren't checking for you. I'm just going to keep it a stack with you. Women aren't checking for you. They don't care about your charisma. They don't care about your personality. If they're not physically attracted to you, by and large, they're not going to care about how charismatic you are. And usually when dudes say that they're charismatic, they're believing that about themselves. They haven't been told that by multiple people, right? That's just what they're telling themselves for the most part. And But we'll talk more about that later. But your looks need to be dialed in, man. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what you may even think. You need to get your looks dialed in if you want to be able to attract women to you. Because here's the thing. Right now, and especially as years pass, women don't need men, right? They don't need men for their survival. They don't need men for their money. They don't need men for their provisioning. Women got their own jobs. They got their own careers, Women are making multiple six figures even now. There, a lot of women are making more money than men in today's world, right? So what do they need your money for? They don't, right? So what can women get from men that they can't get themselves? Men's genetics. That's the thing that women can't give themselves and can only get from a man is a man's genetics, right? And they're only going to want to reproduce with a man that looks good, that he has a handsome face. He has a nice body. Why? Because that's going to signal that man can reproduce healthy offspring for her. And again, that's the only thing that she can truly get from a man that she's not going to be able to provide herself. Because like I said, they don't need us for our provisioning. They don't need us for our money. And honestly, even though they needed us for that back in the 50s and 60s, they more than likely didn't actually want to be in that position. They more than likely didn't want to be with the men that they were with. It's not like all of a sudden, because we're in 2024, that now women are more about men's looks and stuff. No, they've been about men's looks. It's just that they didn't have the ability and the freedom to express that or exercise their options the way that they do now because, yeah, they may have needed men more back then for their survival, but because now, again, with the careers that women are stepping into the money that they're making now. They don't need they don't need our money, man. They don't need a man. Now, it's a different conversation 
to want a man, to want a man to lead them, of course, but even the men that they're going to want to lead them, they're going to be handsome, attractive men, man. It ain't just going to be a random dude who thinks that he's running shit, even though she doesn't find him physically attractive. He may have money and all this stuff, but if she's not feeling him physically on a primal level, she's not going to be messing with that dude. Why does she need to, right? And to get to that charismatic personality, social skill piece of the video, am I saying that this stuff doesn't matter? No, it definitely does. And matter of fact, it actually really matters once you do meet a woman's physical attraction threshold and preferably you exceed it, which we'll talk more about that here in a second. But here's the thing. Like I said earlier, women aren't going to be checking for a man's charisma if he doesn't at least meet her attraction threshold. At minimum, he has to meet her attraction threshold. What does that mean? She just simply has to find him physically attractive. That's it, right? But I would prefer that you dial in your looks, you dial in your physique, you practice body game to attract women to you and far exceed their attraction threshold. Because then they're going to be looking at you a completely different way. They're going to start looking at you as the prize, right? Because the more attractive you are as a man, the more rare you become. Because there are more men with money than there are men who are actually good looking and actually take care of themselves. And I'm not saying don't get your money. Like you want the best of both worlds. You want the looks, you want the looks facially, the body, and you want the money, but you want the money for yourself, not for the woman. But there are more men with money than there are men who take care of themselves that look good. And I've talked about this in my last video talking about body game, but there's a study that shows that one out of every 10 men have uh, visible abs, visible six pack abs. And just because that one out of every 10 men that has six pack abs that are visible doesn't mean that he's actually in shape. It doesn't mean that he's, you know, built, that he looks masculine, he looks aesthetic, he has that V shaped proportionate physique. And I'm bringing all that up just to paint the picture that the competition is slim to none. It's easier to get into the 1%, but then once you get into the 1%, it's all about how can you outcompete the other one percenters, right? But if you just go outside and you look around you, you will see that most of the, the men that you see around you, they don't look like they actually put effort into their appearance, which is why women aren't choosing them, which is why women aren't approaching them, which is why they are getting finessed by women. And we're going to talk more about this, but this is the reality, man. But here's the thing. Once you do meet her attraction threshold or preferably you exceed it, then yeah, charisma and personality will matter more. However, when you are a handsome, attractive man, and, and listen, you got to be handsome, and attractive to the point where you make her nervous, not in, in a bad way, but you make her nervous in a sense where she's not used to your level of attractiveness. Now, this is going to be, there's going to be varying degrees to which you can exercise this based on your genetics. But here's the thing. And most of you guys who may be watching this, more than likely haven't maximized your genetics. I know some men are going to be like, oh, Jordan, but look at you. You have a good base. You have a good foundation and stuff. Yeah, I do. But I still had to maximize my genetics. I still had to put in the work to look the way that I do now, right? And there's always ways to improve and level up. But most men who are going to cope in the comments, you men who are going to cope in the comments, you haven't maximized your genetics. You, I know damn well you haven't. And if you did, you'd be getting better results. Now, again, results will vary, but you will be getting better results. And if you truly have maximized your looks, and genetics. And yeah, that's when you're going to have to then level up your charisma and your personality and your social skills. But like I said earlier, women aren't going to be checking for that until you at least meet their physical attraction threshold. And if you don't, you're going to have to do a whole bunch of selling. You're going to have to wear them down. You're going to have to do a whole bunch of chasing, a whole bunch of jumping through hoops and all this stuff, which isn't efficient and doesn't give you any leverage in my opinion, which I don't think is the way that you should go about your dating life. That's just in my personal opinion, right? But do what you want. However, once you become handsome and attractive enough to where you make her nervous in the sense where she's not used to interacting and being with a man that looks the way that you do, therefore you are a rarity to her. Therefore, she's going to be nervous because she hasn't been in enough situations or been in any type of situation where she's used to dealing with the man that looks the way that you do, that presents himself physically the way that you do. She's going to be nervous. She's going to be anxious. And this is why as a man that's handsome and attractive to the point where you make women nervous. And again, I don't say that in a negative way or in a way where you want to intimidate them or anything like that. No, don't do that which is exactly why I'm about to say the next thing, which is you got to be a cool and solid dude and lower her guard. That's why if you're a returning subscriber of mine, that's why I talk about how the Bruce Wayne archetype, the Batman Bruce Wayne archetype, I'm a big Batman nerd. I'm always going to be talking about Batman in some way, shape or form. 
the Bruce Wayne, super stoic, super like gritty, like I'm only going to say one or two, five words per sentence, like that demeanor only works in the comic books. That demeanor only works in the movies. That demeanor only works in the TV shows. And you'll have dudes who will say, you got to be hyper masculine and, and all this stuff. Like, yeah, you still got to be masculine. You still got to be stoic. But especially when you become a handsome, attractive man, you got to have a, a, a degree of softness to you in the sense where you can lower a woman's guard and she's no longer going to be anxious and nervous. And she's going to be more comfortable being around you. She's going to enjoy being around you. She's going to associate positive feelings with being around you. That's why you don't try to go out and intimidate these women and, and make them even more nervous and stuff. Right. Because once you reach a level of attractiveness to where you not only exceed a woman's physical attraction threshold, but she's nervous because she's not used to being around dudes like you. If you want to lead that interaction somewhere, you're going to have to lower her guard, man. You're, you're going to have to lower her guard. It's just like in sales. If someone is showcasing resistance towards your offer to your product, to your service, or they have objections, this is a little bit different, right? This is a little bit different, but I'm just more so illustrating the point that people aren't going to move forward with you until they're at a level of ease and comfort that will allow them to move forward with you without any resistance, if that makes sense, right? So in the context of women that find you physically attracted to the point where they are nervous, you got to lower their guard and be cool. Be nice. Don't be scared to flash a good smile to women when they're when you're talking to them, especially when you can tell that they're nervous, which they'll either admit it to you that they're nervous or you can just tell them their demeanor and their tonality and their body language if they're trembling with their hand or stuttering a little bit or they're repeating their words and they don't realize that they're repeating their words. You'll be able to pick up on those things and then that's when you need to ease her, man, ease her because I'm going to be honest with you, man. You're going to be a cold ass dude if you're handsome and attractive and you're a solid, cool dude and you know how to make people feel good and feel comfortable around you. Bro, no, who's not going to like you at that point? That's why that whole hyper masculine alpha stuff, that's all just marketing, man. No one's really out here acting like that. Now, you can probably make the argument, man, just because men aren't acting like that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be. It's like, well, okay, you find me a man that's doing that and tell me how successful he is with women and just with people in general. Because I've been in sales. Like, People are only going to do business with people that they like. Women are only going to deal with men that they like by and large, right? They're not going to want to be, with, be around you consistently, right, if they don't like you. They're not going to want to be intimate with you if they don't like you to a degree, if they don't like being around you. You dig what I'm saying? So get that out your head, man, because that, a lot of that is just marketing and social media and shit like that. So with that being said, this is going to be even more important because women will have negative perceptions of handsome and attractive men because handsome and attractive men to them are rarities. And I want to talk, I want to touch on that because we always hear, oh, women have a lot of all, all these options, show social media, they have access to celebrities and, and all this stuff, which yeah, they do. But just because they have a bunch of options doesn't mean that they're viable options. They're not viable options. I know that for a fact because I've been with women who have shown me their inbox on Instagram, dating apps, etc. And they're scrolling like pages of messages from dudes who they're not even talking to, not even giving the time of day laughing at these dudes. Why? Because these dudes aren't viable options. So yeah, they have a lot of options, but they're not viable options. They're not quality options. So therefore, it's like, what good are they? Okay, you got a bunch of you got a bunch of names and, and numbers in your DMs, but that doesn't really mean much to them. Yeah, okay, the attention stuff, they like the attention, okay. But that's as far as it goes is attention. Whereas when you are a handsome and attractive man and you are her physical type, you not only meet her physical attraction threshold, but you exceed it. Aim to exceed it. Cause then your interaction with the woman is just gonna be a lot easier and a lot more smoother for you and her, right? You guys are both going to enjoy each other's company, but once you exceed her attraction threshold, she's going to be feeling you, but she's also going to be projecting a negative perception on you because she's going to assume that a man that looks the way that you do is going to have a bunch of women because she knows that you are a rare man out here because most men aren't taking care of themselves. And you have to understand that most men think it's feminine to take care of themselves. 99% of men think it's feminine to take care of themselves. So therefore, they're not going to take care of themselves. Therefore, they're not going to be putting themselves in the best position to attract women to them because number one, they think it's feminine to take care of themselves. So therefore, they don't look like they take care of themselves, which means that they're unattractive to women, which means that women aren't going to be checking for them, giving them choosing signals, approaching them or anything like that. That's by and large the reason why most men out here aren't succeeding with women. That's why it's like, okay, before you cope, 
dial in your looks. Do everything that you possibly can to maximize your looks. And then talk to me. Present yourself in the best way online. Present yourself in the best way in person. And then come talk to me. But I guarantee you that your results will improve. Doesn't mean you're going to get the Instagram baddies. Because a lot of you guys want to try to get the baddest of the baddest women. Doesn't mean you're going to be able to do that. So just understand that like you, you're going to have to fight in your weight class, man. You're going to have to fight. Understand what your weight class is, meaning understand the type of women that you can attract and the women that are filling you and stay in that weight class. Don't try to don't try to go up in the weight class if you can't handle it, if you know you can't win. You know what I'm saying? So just understand that. Have the proper expectations. But just understand that when you do everything that you can to maximize your looks, your face, your body, your fashion, your style, your sex appeal, all that stuff, you're going to see more success with women because I've seen it in person with other men. I've seen women approach other men who don't look like your typical Chad or Tyrone that all you guys think that those are the only type of men that do get women, which they do, in fact, get women. But they're not the only types of men that get women, though. That's the thing. And most of you guys who think that you're only watching these videos, not this type of video, but you're watching videos from these dudes who are too scared to show their face. And if they're too scared to show their face, do you think that they really have experience with women? No. And a lot of these dudes are coming out saying that they don't have that much experience with women. And you're taking their word for it. And they're not even out here like that. So I, I digress. I'm just trying to make a point that don't give up before you even started. Because if you do, then you're automatically going to lose, right? But you will see, man, that you can make it a reality for women to come to you. You can see that it's possible for women to come to you and that you can be a man that is actually attracting women, right? And, and, and let me touch on the negative perception thing because I don't think I even finished that. I know I went on a tangent there. But women will have negative perceptions of you, but... <laughs> Because you're such a rarity and because they such they have such a high physical attraction towards you, they're still going to give you a chance. They're still going to give you a chance. Women, if you exceed their physical attraction threshold, but they still have a negative perception of you or assumption of you as far as like they may think that you're an a-hole, you're a jerk or whatever. That's just because the men that look the way that you do, they're with a lot of women and they like that, but they don't like that at the same time because Women don't want to be with a man that no, that no other woman wants, but she also doesn't want to get cheated on. She doesn't want to get played. She doesn't want to be done dirty, which is understandable. Nobody wants that to happen, right? Even you fake players out there, don't try to act like you wouldn't be hurt if a woman did you dirty. You dig what I'm saying? So treat these women well, man. Be cool. Be respectful. Be kind. And the dudes who are going to say that's simpy, those dudes aren't getting women. That's how I know that. If you say that's, if you say that's simpy, or beta, you ain't getting women. You're not getting women. And you don't understand anything about sales, which tells me that you're not successful when it comes to relationships with people in general. Because people don't deal with people that they don't like, man. That's why I'm saying that fake, alpha, hyper-masculine shit, like that's all marketing, bro. That's all marketing. But this is why it's also important to level up your looks because you will see that you will be able to attract women to you who are just genuinely into you and the way that you look. They wanna be around you. And these are the women that are simply choosing you. And that's why you want to be a man that is able to attract women to him. Stop trying to sell these women, man. Stop trying to twist their arms to be with you. Because the men that do this, they're just needy for sex. They're just needy for sex. And yes, sex is amazing. But sex is amazing with the women that want to actually be with you. Like, have you ever been intimate with a woman who actually wants to be with you? That actually wants to be there? That you didn't have to constantly chase, not pursue, but chase to get her to want to be intimate with you. Like, have you, I mean, no, it's like this. People love buying stuff. They don't like to be sold to though. I repeat, people like buying stuff, but they don't like to be sold to though. It's the same thing here. Women will approach men. Women will want to be intimate with men, right? At the end of the day, you want to become a man that is able to attract and not chase. And most men who think that this isn't possible just simply haven't experienced it because I have. And I'm going to showcase the proof to you guys in this video as well. But don't tell me that this isn't true when I've experienced this. Just because most men experience one reality doesn't mean that's, that's the only reality. All right? Again, just because most men experience one reality, the majority of men experience one form of reality doesn't mean that it's the only 
reality. And it doesn't mean that you can't strive to transition from that reality of maybe you're the one that's constantly having to uh, chase women. You're the one that's constantly having to convince women to talk to you, to like you, to go on dates with you, multiple dates, drop money on them, and they're not even trying to give you a kiss. Or you can be the man in a different reality where women are coming to you. Women are approaching you. Women are giving you choosing signals. Women are buying you stuff. The reality, there's many different realities, but just because, again, the majority of men experience one reality doesn't mean that's the only one, right? But at the end of the day, you want to be able to attract women to you and interact, date, be in relationships with the women that want to be with you. Because it's one thing for you to need something, but it's more powerful if you want something that you also need, but... Someone has to want something or someone if an interaction is actually going to be fruitful for both parties. Do you dig what I'm saying? So like with sales, someone may need an, a product. They may need a service that's going to help them further their life in some way, shape or form or solve a particular problem that they're seeking out information in regard to that product or service to see if that product or service can help solve that problem. But if they don't want that product or service, you're going to have a tough time being able to sell them if they even buy at all. So ideally, you should want the very thing that you also need, but for a sale to occur, for a deal to be closed, or to have a fruitful interaction with a woman, she has to want to be with you, just like how someone has to want your product. They have to want your product in order for them to actually buy and move forward with it. So attract do not chase. And that is the importance of looks maxing and practicing body game and just dialing in your looks. Don't be that dude who just thinks it's all about the face and the body doesn't matter. Do both. You're only going to get better results. Do both, right? Do both. So that's the importance of looks maxing and body game to attract women to you. Let's talk about choosing signals to look out for. So these are some choosing signals that I wrote down that I've noticed multiple times just being out, right? Whether it's at a, at a bar, a club, party, social gathering, a restaurant, grocery store, it doesn't matter. So first one is that they'll give you double takes when they first see you. And it's more so going to be like in a pleasant disbelief, like, oh my gosh, like this handsome man just walked into Chipotle. Like perfect example. I went to Chipotle yesterday. I walked in and I noticed one of the workers like looked at me, smiled to her coworker and then looked back at me. Choose a signal right there. She was in pleasant disbelief. And I know it, it sounds like, dang, like you're cocky or you're conceited, Jordan. Think whatever you want. I'm just reporting back to you guys to demonstrate that there's a different reality than what you think is the only reality that exists when it comes to being a man that has to chase women. Because here's the thing. Women actually, in my opinion, are the selectors when it comes to intimacy. They're the selectors. Just like how, if you didn't know, the lionesses do all the hunting. The lionesses do all the pursuing while the king of the jungle just lays back in the cut and chills. The lionesses do all the work. The lionesses decide which line that they want to mate with. Nature has showed us that really it's the women who are the selectors. Why do you think that? Uh, I know the, the hardcore cold approachers are going to come at me for this. And I think there is a time and place to cold approach for sure. But by and large, why do you think that most men struggle with cold approaching? Why do you think most men are, are unsuccessful with cold approaching? Because it's not naturally what we're meant to do. Women, in my opinion, are meant to come to us. In my opinion, they're the ones that are the selectors because they have to decide which man is going to be the best suitable man to reproduce her offspring and give her healthy offspring. In my opinion, again, in certain contexts, there, may, there are going to be times where maybe you have the code approach because the woman just she hasn't noticed you because maybe she's with a friend group. She's with a social gathering. Right. I'm sure there are going to be times and places to do that. And that's when you are have to be selective. That's when you are have to be calibrated. That's when you are have to be a little bit strategic and be able to then adjust your approach based on the situation, based on the woman, based on what you could visibly see. But by and large, I think that's why a lot of men struggle when it comes to cold approach. I think that's why the success rate of cold approaching is very low because it's the women who are the natural selectors, man. And we've seen that with nature. We've seen that with nature with the lionesses, right? Read up on that, man. Do some research on that and you'll see that to be true. But anyways... Women, they'll give you double takes when they first see you because they're going to be in pleasant disbelief that a handsome and attractive man just stepped up into, into the building, into their vicinity. 
And you got to be observant, man. So because I've had people like ask me, like, how are you able to observe all this stuff? How are you able to peep this stuff? Because I'm I, I've been I was raised to just be observant of my surroundings. I do a lot, a lot of people watching, too. I don't know. I just I do that, man. So I'm constantly checking. I'm constantly checking for people. I'm constantly looking and making sure that I got some of my eye that my surroundings are are in order. I'm constantly looking around and constantly checking for people. So that's how I'm able to peep that out. So start to be more aware and more observant of your surroundings and of people and in particular women when it comes to seeing, okay, is this girl choosing me or not? Number two, when they're with a group of friends, they'll almost be gossiping about you. But usually this is going to be in a good way if you're actually attractive. So I've seen women at bars where they're with a group of women and I'll make eye contact with them. They'll smile, but they'll have like a demeanor to them to where they're like, oh, I just got caught. He was just looking at me like, girl, look, he was just looking at me like he knows we're talking about him. It will be in that kind of way. But usually if you lock eyes with them multiple times and you see them like constantly looking at you, maybe giving you like a little bit of a smile, you're, they're not going to have a disgusted face. They're not going to look like they're irritated just by looking at you or they're disgusted by looking at you it's more so going to be in a way like oh my god like he's attractive like he just saw me looking at him like he knows that we're talking about him he knows that we find him attractive it's going to be in that type of demeanor but this is going to be good if you're actually attractive and this ain't just about how you feel it's about what data has shown you right about what the market we always say the dating market but we'll call it the market right what the market has displayed to you in terms of data as far as like other women having told you that you're attractive and have proven to you that they find you attractive by being intimate with you, going on dates with you, and that actually leading somewhere, being in relationships with you, et cetera. Number three, you'll constantly see them looking at you. They'll look away, and then look back at you. They'll look away, they'll look back at you. They may look at you, look down, look away, look back at you again, do the same thing. But if you constantly see them looking at you, then looking away, and then looking back at you, more than likely that's a choosing signal, right? Another one, and then these are more obvious ones, but like the fourth one, they'll flash smiles at you multiple times, right? See if they do this multiple times. If it's just a one-time thing, eh, still could be a choosing signal, but I like to see if they do this multiple times, because women are just, they're not just smiling at any dude. They're not smiling at every dude. They're going to be selective with which men that they smile at. Women are smart enough to know that if they give men the wrong idea, that man is going to be like a, a dog, a thirsty, hungry dog following them anywhere and everywhere, right? Th that dude's not going to leave them alone. They're going to be a lot more selective of the men that they smile at or that they give displays of signals to that could then indicate that they are interested in that man, right? So check to see if they do this multiple times. If they smile at you multiple times, that's a good sign that she finds you attractive and that she's inviting you to approach. Another thing, they'll play with their hair as they look at you. Right, they'll play with their hair as they look at you, and that's again if they're looking at you multiple times, they look away. They're talking to their friends, etc. But if you see that they're playing with their hair, like they're constantly rubbing it like this, or they're constantly doing this with their hair, or doing both, right? They're nervous. They find you attractive because again, they're not used to seeing a man to your caliber of your caliber in person, right? They're not used to seeing men like you. They're not used to seeing men like us, like my titans, man. We level up our looks to the point where women are the ones that are coming to us. And here's the thing. You, you'll hear women say, we don't want to approach men. Even if you don't want to, they do. If they don't want to approach men that they find physically attractive and handsome, they will. If they may be telling the truth that they don't want to, but they will. If they're ruthless to wanting to get you, if they're ruthless to wanting to pursue you, right? Shout out to Coach Yo Ever Overton. He talks about how women are, are ruthless to <laughs> either pursue you or get rid of you, right? But... Women will approach you. Now, I will say this. Women do want handsome, attractive men to approach them. But I would usually be peeping for a choosing signal before you do that. But if your looks are really dialed in and the situation calls to where you have to cold approach because you really have no choice. And sometimes, and shout out to Uncle Ron Wills, he's talked about this where a woman will, a woman may not notice you to, until when you cold approach her. When you cold approach her, she'll choose you. Because she'll be like, oh my God, like this handsome, attractive man is approaching me. I've had situations like that where I didn't necessarily do the cold approach. And that's when a woman chose me on the spot. But usually when I'm like walking somewhere at a bar, I've had women like intercept me and stop me on my way to the bathroom or on my way from the bathroom. It's always when I'm either going to or coming back from the bathroom, but I'll get intercepted or maybe I'll accidentally run into a woman 
and we'll look at each other and she's like, oh my God, you're very attractive. Like you're very beautiful and stuff like that. I've had situations happen like that. So right then and there, they chose me on the spot. They may have not noticed me before that, but then they chose me on the spot because we ran into each other. You have situations like that, but they're still choosing you nevertheless, but there may be more times where you have no choice but to cold approach, especially if, if this is a girl that you find very attractive, you know you're not going to see her again, then yeah, go for the approach, but just understand what you're getting into. And then the last one is that you're going to have long stares. They're going to give you long stares with smiles. And usually I've had a situation where a girl was like giving me long stares and smiles and almost like motioning me to come to her. Like She'll smile at me, look down, and then look back up, and then like turn her head a little bit, like almost motioning me to approach her without doing this, hey, approach me, or hey, come here, approach me. Like, you know, they're not doing anything like that, but they'll almost motion you with their eyes, their smile, their long stares, their multiple long stares, and motioning their head for you to approach them. It, this may be more subtle, this may be something that they do subconsciously, but nevertheless, that's what they're gonna do. And then, if you see that a girl's following you wherever you go, like the gym, bar, club, grocery store, etc., they're more than likely putting themselves in your vicinity for you to approach them, right? If you see that they're constantly following you, that's a good sign that they're that they're feeling you and that they want you to approach them. This may not be the case every single time, but this is a good sign that they're choosing you, right? So those are choosing signals to look out for. This is how women will approach you. So when it comes to in person. This is what I've, I've experienced, right? So I've experienced women sending their friends to approach me. And this could be male or female friends. I've had women where I was at a club with a group of people. We were in like the VIP section. I'm dancing and shit. I'm just minding my own business. I don't even notice these girls. And I'll have someone tap me on, on a shoulder, whether it's a, a guy or it's a girl. And they're approaching me on the behalf of their female friend. And this is another thing. This is why... I've started to realize more, man, that, yeah, women are intimidated and they are nervous by handsome, attractive men. And women, because honestly, if you guys want me to keep it a stack with you, the, the script gets flipped. The tables get flipped. Women will be in the position that most of the men are in where they'll be the ones that are nervous. They'll be the ones that want to send their friends to approach you. I know most men don't send their friends to approach women or they shouldn't, but women will be in that nervous position like how most men are right? Why? Because they don't want to get rejected by you. They're intimidated by you. They're nervous and they, they don't want to get rejected by you because they're going to assume again, that when you are a handsome, attractive man, that you got all these women on you, right? Whether or not you actually do is one thing, but perception is reality a lot to people, right? So they're going to assume that they're assuming pre-selection on you. I talk about this in my videos. They're going to assume pre-selection. They're going to assume that you got a bunch of women. So therefore they're going to believe that you're in abundance. So therefore, since they think that you're in abundance, they're going to assume that you may end up rejecting them. So to make sure that they don't get, at least to make sure that they don't have to deal with the rejection directly and possibly get embarrassed publicly, they'll send their friends to approach you. Or second thing that they'll do is that they'll approach you with their friend, basically for the same reason. They want to approach you. They want to make the introduction themselves but they'll be still nervous and scared to do so. So they'll bring their friend. And I've had this happen to me a lot. And the girls that have done this, I just, I didn't notice them. I didn't see them. Maybe because there's just a lot of people and stuff. So I just, I didn't happen to notice them. But a lot of the women that have approached me in this way, I just simply didn't notice them. So I know, I, and I know I said earlier, you gotta be aware of your surroundings and stuff like that. But you're, maybe you're not gonna be able to peep every single person just because maybe the place that you're in, like a bar or club, is just so packed. A lot of the girls who approached me, man, I didn't even notice them. That's the thing. I didn't even notice them, but they noticed me though, right? Or you'll have women that will approach you just themselves, but usually they're tipsy or drunk. And either if they approach you with their friend or they approach you themselves, by themselves, they're usually tipsy or drunk. And this is when they use liquid courage. Well, that's what I'm saying, man. When you become that handsome, attractive man, when you become that dude that does it for her physically, listen to me. They're going to be in what usually the position is for the man. I know some dudes are going to be like, man, Jordan, the way that you go about this inbound game, as I call it, is not masculine. It's not masculine right? Real men go for what they want. It's like, usually you only, and shout out to Coach EO, because he said this, but it's like, usually when men say that, it's only in the concept of, it's only in the context of women. Everything else in, in their life and different points of their life, they're not going for what they want, <laughs> right? 
But it's like, is this, is it really? Is this really? Is this really the female, the feminine role? When the king of the jungle kicks back in the cut and the lionesses do all the hunting and pursuing for him, yeah, he's still the king of the jungle. He's still running shit, right? Is it the feminine role when you've actually put in work and took action to develop yourself into the man that is worthy of such treatment, that is worthy of such attraction? You tell me, and, and listen, how about this? Which position would you rather be in? Yeah, there's going to be time and places where you may have to do that, especially if she's giving you choosing signals, and yeah, duh, but she's still sending you interest. She, she's still coming to you, but she's sending her interest to you. You're just physically going to her to capitalize on the interest that she sent to you. But even then, it's like, which position would you rather be in? Because I'll tell you what, I've been in positions where I literally have been in bars. I've been in... In clubs where I've seen men who are getting finessed buying women drinks, those girls take their drinks and bounce, and then they're going to come straight to me and validate me. Not saying I'm looking for their validation, but the point is they'll come to me, and when they come to me, I'm in the, in the alpha position. When I say alpha position, I don't mean like alpha in the sense of like the masculine alpha, hyper-masculine persona or archetype that you see a lot of these dudes marketing to you i'm just in the more i'm in the position of leverage i don't want to say i'm in the superior position that's because that's going to come off wrong but i'm in the position of leverage and when you are the man that is that you visually see women going and finessing guys for drinks for sport but then they come to you and then all of a sudden when they come to you they're that, but see here's the thing when women come to you, they're actually the feminine ones. They're feminine. Some of you guys are going to be like, oh, it ain't masculine the way you run inbound game, man. You wait for girls to come to you. Well, first of all, I don't wait for girls to do shit. Because when I go out, I'm having a good time with my boys. I'm not trying to game out here because no, I don't need to. I, I don't need I don't need to. Yeah, I'm talking my shit. I don't need to. I don't need to. When you've developed yourself into a man that is worthy of such attraction that it can attract things to him. You don't, you are the game. Yeah. Oh yeah. My face is the game. My body is the game. My fashion is the game. My sex appeal is my game. Everything about me physically is my game. And then when it comes to my charisma and my personality, like that's not even game. That, that's just who I am. That, 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 that's just who I am. It's not even game, but you become the game. You don't need game. Right. You don't need game when you are the game. Of course, be aware. And I'm being a little bit funny and, and talking shit a little bit, but I'm being truthful. At the end of the day, you there's no need for game when you are the source of being able to attract women to you. And that's the thing. So you, some of you guys are going to be like, man, inbound game isn't masculine. How is it not masculine when the women that come to you are feminine? I repeat, how is it not masculine when the women come to you and they're feminine? Because when women come to me, they're feminine. And they're feminine as, as hell. They'll be masculine to the dudes that they aren't feeling. Yeah, they'll be masculine to the dudes that, aren't, that they aren't feeling. They'll get treated a certain way. But when they go to the dudes that they want, they're not, gonna, they're not doing all that masculine shit. For the most part, by and large, they're not doing all that masculine shit. They're going to be feminine. They're going to be sweet. They're going to be kind. They're going to be friendly. They're going to be like that. So some of you guys are going to be like, man, inbound game isn't masculine because you can't run inbound game, dude. That's why. Because you can't run inbound game. Because my boys, my Titans, Titan gang, right? Put hashtag Titan gang down below if you're part of the Titans. This is what we, we run our shit like we're the king of the jungle, man. And we only interact with women that want to be around us because those are the best women to be with. And what made this so apparent to me was because with my other business, with my high ticket coaching business, I was doing a lot of cold DMs. I was doing the equivalent of cold approaching that men do when it comes to getting women. I was doing that when it came to acquiring clients. And this is when this really clicked for me was when I was in a bar with my boy that I do jujitsu with. And I saw that I've literally seen women who was, were finessing dudes for drinks and then coming, coming to me and then validating me, talking about how they found me attractive, talking about how they, how they had to bring their friend with them because they were intimidated by me. This was the same girl who was running game and seeing how many drinks that they can get for free from men for sport, for, for shits and giggles. 
she's coming to me being feminine, talking about how she was intimidated and nervous, which is why she brought her friend with her because she found me attractive. When that happened, I was like, man, I need my business to be this way. I, I was because whether it's making money, it's business, it's dating, whatever it is, man, opportunities and people, the best opportunities and the best people are the ones that come to you. Have you ever look at your life, man? The best things that have ever happened in your life more than likely were things that came to you. You weren't seeking for, you weren't checking for, you weren't forcing, you weren't coercing, you weren't twisting arms, you weren't selling. Those things naturally came to you. Why? Because you were worthy and put in the work and developed into the person that was worthy of such opportunities and people to come to you. Why is that now all of a sudden different when it comes to women? Because that's not most men's reality. Like, why would you want to like convince somebody to be with you? Why would you want to convince a girl to like you? Because you want to have sex with her? You that needy? That's feminine to me. See, that's the thing. That's what dudes don't talk about. That's feminine to me. You want, you're needy. You want sex. Why? Why? You, you can't be cool. You can't develop yourself into the man that's able to attract women to him. That's not desperate for sex. Why can't you be a man that has options and doesn't need to be needy? Because here's the thing, too. You're going to actually be able to attract more women to you the less needy you are. That's why men, men repel women because they're needy. They're needy for sex. That's feminine to me that you are so needy for sex that you become a woman. You become a woman because you start to be clingy. You're clinging to women because you want their sex. Because you know you can't attract it. You know you can't attract the women that you want. You know you can't get it that way. You know you can't get it without having to wear a woman down, without having to spam approach women, without having to trick on women. Yeah, I'm talking my shit. Yeah, I'm talking my shit because I've seen this in person. I've seen both sides. I've experienced women coming to me, but I also, I'm experiencing the men who are going to cope. I experience your reality. I'm just not on the negative receiving end of it, but I, I see it like a movie. I'm watch, I watch it like a movie. I saw it last weekend. I saw this same older white dude who was spam approaching all these women and couldn't tell because he was drunk off his ass. He couldn't tell that these women did not care to be around him. Because a lot of you guys can't pick up on this fact. I'm talking to the men who are going to be hating, who are going to be coping and all this stuff. You don't get to experience this reality. And your reality you're needy. You actually become the female. You become clingy. You become dependent on somebody else because you can't develop yourself into being someone that is worthy of attracting someone to you and opportunities to you. So inbound game, is it really feminine when we put in the work and we've done the things that grant us the women and the opportunities that we receive? Because, hey, listen, you ain't just going to get any type of woman or any type of opportunity to you if you haven't put in the work and done something. You guys seen old pictures of me. Go watch my most recent video where I was talking about body game. I was skinny, closer to being skinny fat, but more skinny side, right? Disproportionate, right? Hair was just straight up buzz, like no fade. Like I look like a goofball. Part of it, yeah, is because I was young, but also like the genetics and the way I look now I wouldn't look the way that I did if I didn't put in the work. And here's the thing. I didn't start really seeing the type of female attraction that, I, that I've been getting these past years where women are approaching me. Women are validating me. Women are calling me fine, sexy, and all this stuff. Women are calling me fine and sexy. Yeah, because of part of my genetics. I'm not going to cap. Yeah, I have a, I have a great looking face. I still had to put in work to enhance it, to maximize it. But yeah, I have a great foundation. That body, though, I had to definitely put in work to achieve. Fashion, definitely. Finding my look, finding my hair, right? My hairstyle, growing my facial hair out. A lot of the stuff that women find attractive about me, I had to put in the work to achieve. Those things were in my control, though, the same way that those things are in your control as well. So, yeah, if you're born with a good genetic base, how I've been able to, even though I still had to improve on a lot of stuff, yeah, you're going to be able to go further. But Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. There's a lot of you guys that may not be as genetically gifted, but you still have the potential to still maximize your looks to the best of your ability to where you can actually transition into the inbound game reality, where you can transition into the line reality, where you can be the king of the jungle and you have women doing the pursuing for you. And I honestly believe that's the way that it should be. I don't think, that's, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. I know I'm going off on a rant. 
but I think this is good and I'm going to keep it in this video because this needs to be said. I don't think this is wrong. I don't think it's wrong that a woman should be pursuing a man because, yeah, she doesn't just want to reproduce with any man. She should be the one that's pursuing. Not because we think we're better than women or that we're more valuable as human beings than women. I'm not saying that at all. Don't get that twisted. They should be the ones who are selecting who they are intimate with because their offspring, their survival, if we're going back to evolution, just talking about like evolution psychology, their survival and their offspring is at risk if they are intimate and reproduce with the wrong man. So why shouldn't they be the ones who are the natural selectors? I don't know, man. That's just me. That's just me. Because I experience this reality. And I understand what this looks like. And, and I, I've, I've been experiencing this reality. And I was like, man, I wish my dating life was how my business life was. I was doing the, I was living the reverse realities in the sense where dating life ran on inbound game. Women coming to me. Business life, I constantly had to go to people. But this is what clicked for me. And this is when I was like, man, this is why every man needs to do everything that they can to attract women to them. The way that I started to go from being the guy that was cold DMing people, which is the equivalent of cold approaching women, but I was cold DMing potential clients and leads to sell them my product and service. The way that I started getting more people to come to me was I started to create better content. I started creating content that spoke to those people, that spoke to their pain points, their desires, right? I started to build a personal brand. I started creating content and being someone that people wanted to work with, that people could visualize themselves seeing themselves working with me and seeing how my product my service at the time could help them and once i started creating content like that aka i started to build myself up i started to put out value to the marketplace then that's when they started to come to me the equivalent of that is leveling yourself up for dating the equivalent of that is leveling your looks up getting your face in order dialing in your facial aesthetics your body your fashion your style your sex appeal you become a viable option to women that they want to interact with and that they want to reproduce with. You're, pro you're producing value for her by doing that. Make it about you, though. You are your main objective. You are your main priority, but you're providing value to her by being a handsome, good-looking man that looks like he has his shit together that is put together because most men aren't like that. So that's where the value is created. Same way that by me creating content that was shifting people's beliefs, that was giving them new perspectives, that was providing value to them, and I was creating content that made people know, like, and trust me, and I was building a personal brand, which then made people to not only come to me inbound and want to work with me, I didn't have to hard sell those people. I didn't have to get them on a sales call and, and talk to them for an hour and a half, two hours to try to sell them on my product or service. They were already ready to buy from me because my content, my personal branding, all that did the heavy lifting. Same way with the looks. When you are a good looking man and you are well put together, that's going to carry a lot of the weight for you. You're not going to have to do a whole bunch of convincing and hard selling because your looks are going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. You still got to close. Don't get that twisted. You still got to close, but you're not going to have to go super hard with the sales aspect. You're not going to have to convince anybody of anything when they're the ones coming to you. Do you really have to hard sell somebody that's coming into you and telling you that they want to work with you? No. So why do you think that's any different when it comes to attracting women? It's not. It's just most men are experiencing this reality. So therefore, they think that they, this reality isn't real. But just because you are living in your reality doesn't mean that it's the only reality to live in. So I know I went on a long ass rant, but that needed to be said. So getting back to how women will approach you, like I said, they'll approach you themselves, but usually they're tipsy or drunk because they, they need liquid courage to just have the courage to want to approach you because they're not used to being around men that will look the way that you do, especially if you are a Titan and you are a subscriber of this channel. Online, when it comes to the online aspect of things like social media, dating apps, right? Talking about dating apps, women will message you first on dating apps and they'll say things like, hey, or hey, handsome, or you know, if you're really good looking to her, she'll say you're beautiful, you're gorgeous, or they're gonna slide into your DMs and most of the time indirectly express interest in you by starting random conversations or start a conversation based on whatever it is that you posted on your Instagram story. But then you'll sometimes like if you personally, if you post like a, a shirtless photo of you just getting done with the workout at the gym and you have a good pump going, some women will just straight up send you hard eyes. That's happened to me too. But most of the time they're going to be indirect or you'll have women that will com comment under your photos, reels, just saying whatever. It could be hard eyes. It could be flame emojis 
or they'll just comment something just to make sure like you you have them on your radar that they capture your attention you will have women that will say oh like i, I used, when back when i was like really doing stuff with like online fitness coaching back in 2019 I, I would have women that would like either slide into my dms or comment saying like oh i need a personal trainer like you and oh can you train me and stuff like that so th those are just indirect ways of women expressing their attraction to you and trying to start a dialogue with you so with that being said let's go ahead and let's talk about a story time to illustrate everything that I've been talking about today. So I'm gonna go over the context of this screenshot, this conversation that I had with a girl that I met at the bar last weekend. But going back to my, my point about how the thing that women want, especially in today's society in 2024, and this is only gonna be more apparent and more relevant as time passes. So even if you're watching this video in the future, this is even more important right at that point that you're watching this video than it is right now. But the thing that women want from men that they cannot give themselves is a man's genetics. And this is the proof right here. One of the many forms of proof that I have. And the only reason why I'm showcasing these screenshots is just so you guys know I'm not saying all this stuff, going on all these rants and shit, and then I don't have anything to back it up. I understand you may be skeptical and stuff. Some dudes just talk shit just to talk shit and just to hear themselves talk and, and think they're cool. I'm bringing receipts to you, not because I think this shit is worthy of bragging or I feel like I'm a, this cool guy and all this stuff. I'm just showcasing this stuff to you guys to show like the proof and how I'm encouraging inbound game. I think women should be approaching the, the men that they want because they do have to be selective out here, right? They should be selective out here, in my opinion. And men, you should be leveling yourself up anyways to be the most handsome, attractive version of yourself for you physically and mentally and become the man that is worthy of, of such opportunities and people coming to him because you owe it to yourself. You deserve it if you're on this earth and you're willing to put in the work. I believe you owe it to yourself. So why not go and get it for yourself? You dig what I'm saying? So this was just a prime example of this girl messaging me first and saying we would have cute kids, but whatever, right? This girl right here. So I'm gonna read you this text thread. I know you probably have already read it, but I'm gonna read this out loud to you and then I'm gonna give you the context to it. So this girl said, hey, it was nice to meet you the other night, boom. Message me first. I said, hey there, it was nice meeting you too. I'm still thinking about those truffle fries. She said, ha, so true, they were so good. And then I said, you owe me some now since you didn't think I would text you back. I'll give context on this. She said, I guess that's fair enough. And then I asked her, and I was more strategic because I was gonna show you guys this on the channel because I knew I needed to have receipts and proof to show you guys I'm not just talking out my ass. I said, how come you didn't think I would text you back? She said, ha, I honestly have no idea. Sometimes I just say shit when I'm nervous. What did I say? Women get nervous when they are around handsome and attractive men. And I said, you were nervous. How come? I had no idea. And then she said, I just get nervous when I talk to attractive guys, I guess. So here's what happened. So last weekend, I went to this bar, same bar that I always go to. I was with my boy because we live around the bar and it's just a very chill bar. It's more of a lounge type of bar. I don't like to do clubs or parties or anything like that. I haven't gone clubbing or partying in years now. But long story short, we were sitting at the high top bar table and most of the seats were filled. There was only one spot that was next to me that was empty. And this girl came in with this leather jacket. She was an attractive woman, brunette. She came in. And since my chair was the only one that was available, she sat down in it. But her friend with her was standing up, right? Now, her friend was probably standing up for like maybe five or 10 minutes. And then two of the guys that was sitting next to my friend got up and left. So there were some seats that were available. So I told my friend, hey, Let's move down a seat so this girl can sit down, right? So we moved down a seat and I was like, hey, I looked over to the girl that was standing. I was like, hey, have this seat. We're going to move down, right? That way you can sit down and you don't have to stand. I'm just being nice. I'm just being cool. I'm not trying to game this girl. Some of you guys would probably be trying to do this as game. I was just doing this just to be nice and cool, right? Because I wouldn't feel right a woman standing and I'm just sitting in a seat when there's two available and I can move down. You dig what I'm saying? So that's what I did. And then she sat down. She was like, oh, thank you so much. And then once I did that, her friend, the one that had the leather jacket, her friend, her friend was like, and you are asking my name. And I was like, oh, my name is Jordan. What's your name? And she told me her name. And then she was like, OK, King, I see you because I had a leather black leather jacket on, had a gray turtleneck under it, too. It was similar to I'll just show you real quick. It was similar to what I was wearing right here. It was the same gray turtleneck, but I had a black leather jacket on instead of this black overcoat. And that was pretty much how I was looking that night. And I had my gold ring. I wear a gold ring on my thumb because I guess based on like how the Greeks did it, 
I want to say that if you wear a ring on your thumb, it, it symbolized like power and dominance and stuff. If I'm not mistaken, that's how the Greeks did it. I know that was random, but I just figured I'd tell you because she was, this girl was complimenting me on my accessories as far as like the gold ring. I had a gold bracelet, I had my black and gold watch on, etc. And then that's how we got into conversation. I started talking to the girl with the leather jacket. And then I started talking to this girl that was standing. And then we moved down a seat so that way she could take my original seat and be able to sit down and not stand anymore. And then, so we just started talking and just having banter and just building rapport and stuff. And then me and my boy, we just ordered some appetizers. We ordered some truffle fries and then we ordered some pretzel bites that we were just smashing. And we were like, man, at least for me, I was like, bro, these truffle fries are so good. We need to get another one. And they messed up our order before. So luckily, and this is what I'm talking about, always attracting opportunities to you. We actually got a free, free plate of truffle fries when I was already planning on getting another one because the truffle fries at this bar, because they just came out with these, were so good. I, I needed another, I needed another plate. And I think the girl says something that was next to me. She says something about how the uh, truffle fries looked good. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like I should have, I should have shared mine with you. And then I said this before we got the new plate, before I knew a new plate was even coming. I was like, oh man, like I wish you would have said something. Like I should have offered you some, that's my fault. Right. And then I told her, I was like, we're thinking about getting another one. So if we do, we'll share some with you. And then that's when we got the free plate of truffle fries unexpectedly. I was like, look, I was like, oh, what do you know? Like we got some new truffle fries. I was like, you know what? We're going to share these. Right. Again, I'm just being cool, man. Like I'm not, I don't go out here trying to like game women. Cause like I said, I don't need to, but if I'm not in the vibe or I don't have an energy to where I want to com like communicate and have dialogue with a bunch of people, which most of the time I don't, I'm not going to. But since th this girl was sitting right next to me and, and she was, and that's the thing, she was initiating conversation too. She was initiating interaction, which women will do when they're feeling you. We were having good dialogue. She was a cool, chill girl. So I was like, you know what? And, and the fries were free. The truffle fries were free. So I'm like, here, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's share some, right? So we shared some truffle fries. She liked it. And then we just started talking more. Two guys came and sat next to my boy. And these two guys, one of the guys I actually recognized because he used to go to a high school with my cousin. But one of the guys that was closest to my friend, he was streaming the UFC fight that came on this past weekend. He was streaming it. He had it streamed on his phone. My body was like facing the other direction of the girl. The girl was sitting to my left. I was facing to my right. So my body was faced away from her, but her body was faced towards me. So her body language was directed towards me because she still wanted to talk. She was still interact with me. So I was going back and forth from talking to her to watching the fight. But most of the time, my body was shifted away from her watching the fight. And eventually we just started talking more. I think the Purdue game was on. So she was telling me about IU and Indiana University and how her family went there, et cetera, and how she loved IU and all this stuff. Throughout the night, whenever I would have to go to the bathroom, every time I got up to go to the bathroom, she would always ask, oh, are you guys about to leave? Oh, are you guys about to leave? Or where are you going? Are you about to leave? That was one of the main obvious signs that this, I knew this girl was feeling me. And I would always have to tell her, no, we're not leaving. And then I think throughout the night too, she asked, oh, what else do you guys have going on? for the night. And I was, me and my boy were tired because we were at this bar the night before with a group of friends. So we were out late the night before. So him and I were both tired and I always pick him up. I always swoop him up when we go to this bar because it's, his house is on my way to this bar anyway. So I just pick him up. Right. And he was getting tired to the point where he was ready to bounce. And I was too. And at first he's like, oh no, man, like I can get an Uber. It's all good. Like you can still stay here and, and chill with them if you want to. I don't want to be a burden or anything. I was like, nah, man, like you're good. Cause here's the thing. I don't, if I'm rolling with my boy and I picked him up, I'm not going to just leave him for a girl. Cause that's just whack to me. Like you, you don't need to do all that when the girl is feeling you. you. In my opinion, you don't need to do that. Unless like he insists, unless there's a really good connection and maybe like logistically and the vibe and just the interaction overall, like it can lead to somewhere and you really want to exercise that interaction and that opportunity as long as your boy's cool with it and you don't do him dirty or, or anything like that in my type of situation where you drove somebody to the destination that you're at so you are their source of transportation as long as you don't do them dirt, dirty and they're cool with maybe them you know them getting an uber or whatever so you can do your thing then whatever but i just don't usually roll that way so i told him like nah bro it's cool i wasn't in the mood to try to do all this stuff. I wasn't trying to continue on with the dialogue and do all that stuff. I wasn't trying to be out later than 
I already was because I was already tired and I had jujitsu the next day as far as sparring. So I wasn't with it like that because I was tired, man. So with that being said, it was interesting because this girl went from being like more covert with her intentions and her feelings towards me to where when I told her like, yeah, we're about to leave her body language instantly shifted. She started getting a little bit irritated a little bit. Not, she wasn't mean or anything, but she started to roll her eyes and she was like, oh, like that because she was upset that we were about to leave. And I was like, hey, listen, everything's cool. This is what I'll do. I was like, do you have your phone on you? She said, yeah. And I was like, here, pull your phone out. I'll put my number in. And I was like, we can get together sometime and maybe share a plate of truffle fries again. And then this is what she said. She was like, how do I know you'll text back? And I've had that I've had girls tell me that before because, again, they're not used to being around handsome, attractive men, and they're going to assume that those type of men are going to have a bunch of women, a bunch of options because the men that do look handsome, and attractive, by and large, have a lot of options. So they understand that. That's why she said that to me. I'm like, I'll, I'll text you back here. Let me put my number in your phone. She gave it to me. I put my number in her phone. And then I left the, the bar and we went our separate ways. And then that's when she texted me this and she said, hey, it was nice to meet you the other night. And then that's when I said, hey, there, it's nice to meet you too. And then that's when I said, you owe me some, some truffle fries now since you didn't think I would text you back. And that's what I'm telling you. The game, inbound game, your day in life becomes easy when you become the most handsome, attractive version of yourself, not just physically, not just doing the looks, maxing in the body game, but internally, mentally, Right. Being a man that is worthy of attracting such opportunities and people to your life because you put in the work to be able to deserve those things. The world is not yet a crazy enough place to reward undeserving people, right? I believe Charlie Munger said that. I've heard Ty Lopez said that quite a bit, so I'm pretty sure uh, Charlie Munger said that. But that's the thing. You're not going to be getting these type of opportunities if it's not deserved, right? And also, it goes to show you too, like, how charisma and social skills do matter once you do meet their physical attraction threshold or else she wouldn't have texted me. She wouldn't have said it was nice to meet you the other night. If she wasn't feeling me, if I was an asshole, she wouldn't have said that. She wouldn't have texted me, right? But also because the attraction was there too. So at the same point, you don't have to put in a whole bunch of work when it comes to the social skills and game. Okay, when she says this, I need to say this and doing all this mental gymnastics. You don't need to say all that because the attraction is going to do the heavy lifting for you on your behalf. And this is both of these examples that you see on screen right here. Again, I'm not doing this because I think I'm cool. I'm not doing this because I'm trying to brag or flex on you guys. I'm trying to prove a point that there's a different reality than the reality that you're living in where you may be the guy that's constantly having to chase women. But if you level yourself up, you become the most handsome, attractive version of yourself, again, physically and mentally, and you're a man worthy of attracting such opportunities and people in your life, especially when it comes to your dating life, you're going to be on easy mode, man. So if you guys want to learn how to do that, I dive more into all of this that I talked about in today's video. I dive more into all of this in that free training that I have linked down below in the description and pinned in the first comment that men inside the Inbound Attraction Blueprint program are using to have dating lives just like this where women are coming to them, right? And you'll see that in the free training. I really break down everything that we're doing to run Inbound Game and have beautiful, attractive, kind, feminine, sweet women that we enjoy being around coming to us because they want to be around us, right? And in that free training, I explain exactly step-by-step step how men like myself and the men inside the Inbound Attraction Blueprint are using the frameworks that we use when it comes to running Inbound Game to attract women to them, beautiful, kind, nice women to them on autopilot and copying and pasting inbound game in their dating life with ease and effortlessly to have a thriving and abundant dating life. So if you want that, if you want me to dive more into what I talked about in today's video, if you want to learn more about what I talked about today, definitely check that training out. Again, I'll have a link down below in the description and in the pinned comment. So with that being said, I hope you got a lot of value from this video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe for more videos like this. And with that being said, guys, I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.